Welcome Year 7 to this introduction to programming in Visual Basic. We're going to be using an online programming tool for this demo because we can't currently use the full Visual Studio software we use in school. You'll be converted over to this in class, but this online tool might well be useful for finishing off assignments at home in the future. So the tool we're using is called .NET Fiddle and should be given to you as a link in Show My Homework, but you can also just find it easily using a web search. Once you reach the site, you'll probably see a blank C Sharp program facing you. Uh, and before we're coding, let's just explore the layout and what's on offer. Up at the top, notice I'm signed in. Um, you can easily get yourself an account and signing in gives you lots of extra features. It's far less likely you're going to lose what you're doing. Notably, you can access your own saved work through My Fiddles, plus other normal account setting features. Before getting fully started, Go and make yourself an account using your school email address. Here's my current list of projects, for example. Right, back to the editor. First thing to do on the left is to set your language, and your browser will probably remember that setting, but it's important to double check that you've set this up as vb.net, that's Visual Basic. Next, a few buttons at the top. To create a brand new project, um, you, create, you press New, which is partially currently covered by the logo. Save puts the current program into your My Fiddles library. To run a current code, you press the Run button. Share is very useful. It provides you with a web link. Now, using that web link, your teacher can take a look at your code in .NET Fiddle. This is extremely useful if you need somebody to take a look and iron out any problems. Now in the main window we have the default program. It's become a bit of a tradition in programming that the first program you write when you explore a language for the first time is a hello world program. A program that simply outputs hello world. That's what this one does. So if I adjust what's between the double quotes in the write instruction I can change what it outputs. So this program really only has one active line of code, line 5. All of the other lines are sort of structural. They are important, but not things you need to change. Just don't delete them. If you're in doubt, copy the stuff in between and then press the new button to get the code back. However, we can delete line 5 and put our own code here. Now you can either watch this and then try yourself later or follow as we go. It's entirely up to you. Most useful computer programs, from programs that run traffic lights to applications like Word or even big computer games, store data, change that data, and then output the changes. If we're storing data, we have to tell the program what we want to call the data and what type of data it is. So our first line is using a command called dim to create three variables, as they're called, each of which will be able to store a whole number. Technically, that's called an integer. You'll get used to these commands, but don't worry if that command seems a bit strange. It won't after a while when you're used to it. Our next command is to output to the screen. We've seen this instruction already. The output window is called the console, and the write line command writes text and then moves to the next available line. This is an instruction or a prompt for the user, so they know what to do next. We're going to wait for the user to type in a number and then put that into the variable called a. The command starts with the destination and then on the right of the equal sign we put what needs to be assigned to that destination. We do the same for b, the second number as well. We tend to read these instructions backwards as in read a line from the console and then assign that value to the variable a. Our next instruction performs some processing or changes to the data. We're going to add together the values of a and b and assign the answer, the total, to t. You can now see why we chose t as the third variable now. So t is given the value a plus b. Finally, this program would be no good if we just internally stored that sum. The user needs to be shown the answer. It must be output. Again, the right line is used here. Inside the brackets of the right line, we can output some text between quotes, but we can also join together some extra information. The AND symbol, the ampersand symbol, above 7 on a keyboard, can be used to separate things we want to output to the screen inside the brackets. Our program is now ready to try. Now it's important to run a basic test first to check its works okay. 
that looks just fine. Um, it's also important to test with wider data. So given negative numbers are also whole numbers, will it work with a negative number? Yes, it will. People testing programs also need to try to see if there are things that we could input that might break the program. This program requires whole numbers to be input, so we could try decimal values. However, what happens if we type text as input? Predictably, the program crashes and gives us a fairly obvious error message. Programming at its early stages is all about trying out tweaks to code that you know works to explore further things you can do. Your tasks in this assignment will be to write down what this program does in your own words and then start to make changes to the code to make it do new things of your own choosing. The important thing is give it a go. Good luck.